it's Liz Yule from Old Stables Crafts. Thank you very much for joining me again today. As you probably know, I'm a, an independent stamping up demonstrator from the UK, based in Oxfordshire. Today is one of those spring days where one minute it's sunny and the next minute it's wet. Um, the garden kind of needs it. We had a really hot Easter, which was wonderful, but we've now got one of those sunshine and shower days. So I thought I would bring you a fun project with the Humming Along stamp set and the matching framelits, which are hummingbird dies. Um, I must use this one. I've never used this one and I really must. Anyway, um, I love this set and it's going, but it's gorgeous. It's great for watercolour. Now I'm doing a slightly different project for you today or slightly different way of showing it to you. Because it's watercolour, um, it does mean that there's a lot of water involved, obviously, um, and it also means that there is quite a lot of time needed to dry things out. So I have done quite a lot of prep, um, and I'm just going to kind of put it all together but show you the basics while I am going along. So I'm going to start by protecting my lovely floral grid paper with a piece of um, grid paper that's really messy on the other side, uh, but relatively clean on this side. In fact, there's a lump. Is there a lump there? No, the lump's on the inside. It's that messy. Um, so, it's going to worry me now. Oh, it's a bit of glue. It's just a bit of glue. It'll. I'll have to live with it anyway. So, I thought I'd show you by start start by showing you how I did the background, um, which would have been a whole lot better if I'd have got my colours out in advance. Um, oh, and there's one, one missing. Mm, no, no, that's fine. Right, so I have got, not in that order, um, Poppy Parade, Calypso Coral and Mango Melody, um, because I want a sort of sunset-ish sort of look. Uh, watercolour paper, you can use... Um, shimmery white but the watercolour is better uh, because it's actually made for water strangely um sorry i was just trying to find i've got a these are a, this is an old calico face cloth that i use just as a as a cleaner uh so first thing you need is um either an aqua painter or clean water and a good brush I like the aqua painter because you've got a um, a synthetic nib and it's obviously got water effectively on tap and you're not going to knock it over which is something that I would be very good at doing so that's the first thing you need and you will need some form of either kitchen paper or a cloth to clean off between colors um, you can either use your classic stamp pad and just get ink into the lid she says needing ink in the lid, or you can use reinkers. It's a great use for reinkers, uh, but just by squeezing the pad into the lid, you will get a pool of water. Uh, some of the pads are easier to do that with than others, and I find doing it from both sides helps um, just to get a decent amount. This this mango melody one, I have a problem with getting it to meet, but we'll give it a proper go. Um, See, it doesn't really meet properly. For some reason, this is a just a stiff pad. Um, it just doesn't like doing it. And I've re-inked it recently, so it's not a lack of ink. Uh, it'll do. Um, fortunately, I don't need too much of the Mango Melody. In fact, I might just grab the re-inker, which is there, and then I can just pop a bit of re-inker in the lid just like that. You don't need much, just a little bit. Uh, re will go a very long way. Right, so I'm going to start with the Mango Melody. The first thing to do is to get some water onto your paper, because it's always better to work on a wet surface. If you're worried about your paper curling, it will flatten out, but if you're worried about it curling, um, then uh, get it wet on both sides and that will help reduce the curl. I'm not too fussed. Then pick up your ink 
and just let it do its thong. Um, and you literally just spread it out. And you want to have it kind of fading out because once you've done with one colour, you get the next and clean your brush off so you don't transfer colour. It's not quite so important if you're going darker, but it's best not to. And then again, pick up some ink and let it do its thong. And I am squeezing the barrel of the, um, the water brush as I go, just to get some more water running. And then where I want more intense colour, don't squeeze. In fact, if you want even more intense colour, clean your brush off. And then you've got less water on the, on the brush end. Um, and then clean that off. And it wicks, it wicks away beautifully, just whether you're using a, a cotton cloth like I am or a kitchen towel, um, because the water will just run into it, it wicks the, um, the nib clean really quickly. And then finally, you might actually just get some more water down just in case. You don't want to go onto dry paper if you can help it, because that will give you a line. Um, but then if we pop our last colour on, I love this poppy parade for a sunset. It's perfect. Again, just want to dry that a bit so I can get some more intense ink colour. And then just make sure it's all blended and you can go all the way down and just blend it all in because the whole idea is that it is graduated. doesn't matter if it's a bit blotchy. Um, that's kind of fine. And that is, oh, apart from the white bit up there, that is your background. But that does need to dry. Um, it's nice and curly now. It will flatten as it dries. Uh, but that is a basic watercolour background. And then when it's finished and dry, it will look like that. So it's flattened out. I mean, it's a little wibbly, but it's basically flattened out. Um, I did use Fursy Flamingo on this as well, between the Mango Melody and the Calypso Coral. Didn't actually do anything, with, so I kind of cut it out. But there we are. So that is our background. Um, and it's as simple as that. So I have already done some heat embossing and colouring of... I don't actually need that anymore, um, of the images. Uh, to get this flower image, um, I'll probably do a top tips on watercolour specifically, but basically you do your heat embossing, and I did it in the Stamparatus, I, I inked up in the Stamparatus because watercolour paper has a texture, so it can be quite difficult, difficult to, excuse me, to get enough embossing ink so Versamark onto the paper. So I inked it up two or three times to get enough ink and then put the embossing powder on just so that I knew that I was going to get a good emboss. Um, but to get this shading, you just start in the middle and in much the same way as we did with the flat background, you just start in the middle and fade out. Um, so you do the middle, you can then go in with a very, very um, slightly tinted brush and do the petals and then bring it all back together. And the same with the leaf and the bird. The colours I've used are um, Poppy Parade, still, Mango Melody, grab my colours, Bermuda Bay, Pacific Point and Granny Apple Green, um, just so that it's bright and poppy. And then I'm using a mat of Bermuda Bay for the whole piece. And then I've done on just a scrap, I did a wash of Bermuda Bay having heat embossed. Uh, I did a wash of Bermuda Bay and then die cut using one of the dies from the set. So there is this label uh, in the set uh, and the thank you is in the set. And then I've backed the ends here with copper foil because I've used copper embossing. 
so just to tie it in. I didn't like the look of there not being anything behind the curly cues. Um, I mean, there would have been the background, but I wanted I wanted it solid. So let's pop it all together. Um, I've got a, just a white card base, and that's thick whisper white. So I'm going to use liquid adhesive because this is a bit wibbly. Um, wibbly, obviously, being a technical phrase for warped. Um, so make sure, I'm going to use more glue than I would normally use, but make sure you get the edges well glued uh, because that's where any wibble is going to show. So we can do that and then do you can do the middle. And apparently I need a new, a new liquid adhesive. Let's see if I can, that's better. Just needed a good shake all that was needed and then pop this on here this is so we've got five and five eighths by three and seven eighths for the Bermuda Bay and then five and a half and three and three quarters for the um, watercolour now what I quite often do with the watercolour is do a quarter sheet and then trim down because then if you've got any bits around the edge that are a bit not perfect you can trim them off um, and by a quarter sheet I don't really mean a quarter sheet because it's not an A4 sheet, but I'll cut it so that it's a bigger piece than I was initially looking for. Um, right, so let's build up the card now. Um, and I do want it with the poppy parade at the bottom because we've got poppy parade in the le in the flower. So let's grab some dimensionals. Uh, I might use a small one down there. I'm going to use a reasonable number because, again, watercolour paper is, um, because it's got the textured surface, it's not as, um, it's not as res receptive to the double-sided stick of dimensionals. My brain really isn't working today. I've had a headache for the last couple of days and for some reason, I think it's the change in the weather. Uh, because we had the glorious weather over the weekend um, and now that we've got back to normal spring weather I think my brain just isn't quite coping so I have got a bit of a headache so I apologize for ramble but there we go them's the them's the gigs uh, I'm not worried that I'm going to go slightly off the edge um, that's absolutely fine by me uh, I want to think about where I'm going to put my thank you which is probably there and my little birdie will go there. And then my spare leaf, I think I might have coming out here. Yes. Right, so let's pop pop our leaf on first, if I can pick it up. You could probably get away with just one dimensional, but I'll use two just in case. And yeah, so we'll pop our leaf down and then we can see where our thank you is going. To it, the answer is there. And then, so I need a dimensional there and a dimensional there. And I think that's probably all I need because the rest of it's going to be supported by the leaf and the stem of the flower and then dimensionals on the back of our hummingbird. Now as I say this is not not going to uh, carry over to the annual catalogue so if you want it I should say the new annual catalogue so if you want it now is the moment to get it uh, it is a bundle price, so by buying the stamp set and the dies, you save 10%, which is always good news. Um, and it's gorgeous. It's great for watercolouring, whether that's with watercolour pencils, or whether you want to use a stamp and write markers, or actual watercolour. Anything would be great. It's just so pretty. Right. It would be great with brusho as well, actually, thinking about it. Might have to have a go with it with brusho before I finish. 
as in before I finish with my what's in the annual catalogue not carrying over rather than before I finish with this I'm rambling I really am rambling today okay so pop that down and there we go I always like to give it a good press from the back because that way you know you've got it properly adhered and it's also a good way if you press from the back rather than the front if you've got any ink on your hands it goes on the back of the card and not across your lovely card so there we are bright fresh summery and retiring anyway i hope you enjoyed that i hope it gave you some clues on doing watercolor backgrounds so say i will be doing some watercolor top tips so um don't worry about that uh, I will probably do that in the next couple of weeks. So thank you very much indeed for joining me today. If you've enjoyed that, please give it a thumbs up. If you've got any questions or comments, even if it's just to say that you enjoyed it or actually it was not terribly enjoyable and you didn't learn anything, it's really helpful for me to understand whether the videos that I'm bringing you are helpful. Um, if there's anything you would particularly like me to do a video on, I would be delighted to give that a go for you really happy to take requests. Um, if I don't know how to do a technique that you're interested in, I'm very happy to go and research it and then bring it to you. That's absolutely fine. That's kind of where I think I am um, from a demonstrator point of view. I think that's my job. So very happy to do that for you. Uh, but just leave a comment below. Uh, if you don't already subscribe to my YouTube channel, I would be thrilled if you would. There's a subscription button in all my videos at the bottom right hand corner. So just click on there and if you would like to be notified when I post a new video then when you go over to my uh, YouTube channel you can hit the little notification bell next to the subscribe button uh, but if you don't hit that bell you won't get emails telling you that I've posted a new video which means your inbox doesn't get cluttered up which is sometimes not a bad thing. Uh, if you would like to receive my newsletter you can do that over on my website which is linked below and there's information and close-up photos of this project also linked below in the associated blog post so that's all good stuff obviously if you're in the UK and would like to purchase from me I would be thrilled uh, it's people buying from me that allow me to bring these videos to you uh, if people don't support my business I can't bring you the videos sorry um, so if you are in the UK and you would like to shop with me I would be thrilled uh, there's a link to that below so you can just click through if your order is between 149 pounds and 20 pounds if you use the host code you also get to share the host rewards so in addition to your thank you card and thank you gift you get to share in the host rewards and it can be anything uh, it can be a stamp set it can be embellishments um, I did I gifted uh, the take your pick tool a while ago the chamois all sorts of things so you get you get to have all of that goodness thank you very much indeed for watching and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you again soon